Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. If you're just joining us, we're following up with a few candidates that won in the Wisconsin primary election. We're now being joined by Kaylin Haywood II and his dad, Kaylin Sr. Young Kaylin recently won the state assembly seat vacated by state representative Leon Young in the 16th district and Kaylin Sr. is the co-founder of the Haywood Group, a real estate development company. Both are working to make a huge difference in the city and it's a pleasure to welcome them back to our Issues Milwaukee. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man, you guys are something special. So first <laughs> of all, congratulations to you Kaylin. Thank you. The last time you were here, of course, was not too long ago you were campaigning <laughs> for the state assembly and voila you not only won you made history how's it feel I mean it's I, I thought that once this was over I would get to take a little vacation you know <laughs> enjoy some nice weather but it's been work 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 it's been busy um, the days have still been long but I've been feeling great about it yeah and this is just the beginning so yeah. <laughs> uh, you know you're getting a feel that it's just like one of those things that just doesn't stop uh, yeah. yeah but you're loving it. I'm loving it. Yes. I'm loving it. And you're going to, uh, you're not having an opponent in November uh, because there were no Republicans. So you are ready to go uh, take your seat in January of 2019. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Kaylin Sr. Yes. You've got to be the proudest dad right now. And so talk about uh, the time that he approached you and said this is something that he wanted to do. What was your first response? Um... My first response was uh, really just not surprised when thinking about how to make it happen. Um, that his uh, his uh, statement to me that he wanted to run for this seat um, happened probably 10 years ago. Um, oh, wow. So it was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> Am I surprised? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, he was still in um, elementary school when he first mentioned it. Wow. Uh, then the following year, we were in Madison at the Capitol or at the um, governor's uh, um, home, and he restated it again after we left him ride back to Milwaukee. So when the time came about, it was it was just a long time coming. I know he was ready. He had prepared for it. Um, so it was it was a calm. I was very calm about it. Yeah. So it wasn't uh, a speech on now. You know, this is going to be a oh. lot of work. He already knew that. So, I mean, I said this last time you were here and probably the time before. Uh, <laughs> When I first met you, I knew you were going to go on to do big things. There, there was no question. I just did not know it would be so soon after you graduated <laughs> from high school. But So that's an interesting thing. You are currently enrolled in college. So how are you going to be able to juggle the two? So actually, when I was in high school, I know I wanted to run for the seat for a very long time. So I, when I was in high school looking at what colleges I want to go to, uh, I knew I wanted to go local so I could stay here and run for office. Mm -hmm. So I decided on Cardinal Stritch University. Um, they have a really good program that works with adults who are pursuing careers and who have families. I uh, don't have a family, but I am pursuing <laughs> a very uh, interesting career. So they are very supportive. They supported me in the past, and they're going to continue to support me. So. Yeah. Gonna keep, we're going to make sure we balance it. Okay, good for you. And so I bought you, brought you both here today because uh, I feel like the most important thing that I see in what has taken place is really when it comes to young African American men who face a lot of uh, negative statistics on a daily basis for different reasons. Uh, you are really truly an example of what can happen when you have a positive role model in your life or when you just set your sights high and really put it in your mind that you can do and be anything that you want to do. So uh, how are you able to instill that attitude into this young man? Uh, uh, part of it is uh, uh, just being present and, and, and um, our youth, our kids, they do as they see, not what they're told all the time, but do mm -hmm. as they see. Um, so for me, it was all about um, having a very strong work ethic, um, being determined, staying focused. Um, staying again, I go back to calm, um, and calm energy. Just teaching them at a very young age, simple things of um, how to shake hands and and how to tie a tie, and um, when you meet somebody, how to look them in the eye. Um, those are things that he's been knowing since he was four, five, six years old. Mm -hmm. um, then some of that starts to 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 once it's planted, once the seed is planted, then it's like, automatic. But it's almost yeah. like a you know like they, the saying, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. Then other people are pouring in as well, um, so they're. You know, as a parent, you're saying something, and he may doubt it, but when he goes out in the world, he's either trying it and he sees that it works, 
or he's hearing it from other parties as well, like, oh, my dad said that. And so it's being reinforced. Um, and then he acts upon it. So he takes, he takes all that and then he adds his own flavor to it and <laughs> it makes history. So. And speaking of tie and ties and flavor, you guys showed up kind of dressed alike. I loved it, but <laughs> you guys didn't plan it. So it's just really, he truly is a chip off the old block. <laughs> Imposter. Oh, I mean, down to the shoes. It is so funny, but it really does say a lot uh, about like the relationship that you guys have. And it also shows that you are heavily influenced by your dad, or is it the other way around? <laughs> well, Chelsea, well, Chelsea's outfit, I kind of picked it out first. But. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. So, Kaylin, we talk about history, and that's the part that I think really gives a chill bump effect to so many people to see someone your age be able to pull this off. And um, I did a little bit of uh, research, and I believe the average age of a state legislator nationwide is 56 years old. And the youngest person elected in the country was 18, and now you, correct me if I'm wrong, are the youngest in Wisconsin history to ever take office in the state assembly. So we've been, we've been, trying, to, we've been trying to fact check that and figure yeah. out what it was. I'm actually the second youngest. There was someone who was younger than me by 14 days. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, it was 14 days. But I'm the youngest African American in Wisconsin. Uh, I believe I'm the youngest Afri African American in the United States. Mm -hmm. And currently, I'm the youngest. I'm um, the 18 year old who was elected on the East Coast. She's now, I believe, 21 or 23. Mm -hmm. So I'm the, currently the youngest in the country now. That's awesome. So you did an outstanding job motivating young people to go to the polls. So mm -hmm. talk about the importance of that and keeping them motivated as you take on uh, this new role. Uh, when it comes to the young vote, um, young people who have just graduated from high school, like mm -hmm. I did, people who have just turned 18, they're not 18, 19, even 20. Most of them aren't told to go vote. No one makes them go vote. So the election day comes by, they sit at home, um, everyone talks about it on social media at the end of the night. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. But now we now we were able to engage them and get them involved and get them excited about it. Mm -hmm. Like that's what it was. You had to get them excited and get them engaged. Um, it, it came to meeting them where they were, going to their events. Uh, I work with the Marshall Twins, who are local, um, who are two local artists in Milwaukee who have a huge follower base. Mm -hmm. I think they have about thirty thousand followers. The Marshall Twins, when they make a post saying, come meet me here or come to this event or this party, young people come. <laughs> so working with them, they got young people to come to the polls and show up to register to vote and get involved and get engaged because they understood the importance of expressing our voice. Yeah. The turnout for this election was abnormal. No one, no one expected this amount of people to come out and get involved, but it's because we knocked on every door we could, not just the usual voters, just people that didn't vote every door, engaging young people, getting them involved, first time voters, uh, some people who didn't have IDs or a license, um, taking them to get that so they can go vote. We, we got everybody mobilized and got them engaged. I love it and congratulations on being successful at making that happen. So Kaylin Sr., yes. one of the other reasons I wanted you here today is not only to talk about your son's success, but uh, yours as well. I mentioned you are a real estate developer yep. in the city and recently it made news that you are planning a multi-phase $75 million development at the former Sears store building in Milwaukee. Can you tell us more about that? Oh uh, yeah, so um, the property sits at the intersection of um, West North Avenue and West Fond du Lac Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, very um, high, high traffic uh, intersection. Um, it sits in the 16th Assembly District. Um, and, <laughs> I love um, this. That I, so I have a representative now that's going to be <laughs> staying on top of me. But um, it was really a way for us to, uh, how do we take some, it's a couple, twofold. How do you take some of that energy that's downtown? We got an outstanding, a beautiful arena, mm -hmm. arena district. How do you take some of that energy and migrate it north and south where people are not really feeling like it's the tail of two Milwaukee still? Yeah, because that's four minutes it's from the arena. It's four minutes yeah. from the arena. Yeah. No turn, straight shot. So how do you migrate that energy north? Um, and as you redevelop this site that's historic, that you can hear all the stories about how great it was in the 50s and 60s, um, how do you take that redevelopment and then redevelop attitudes, redevelop mindsets, redevelop perspectives, um, and then really instill hope? So we always say, yeah, we build brick, you know, we actually develop bricks and mortar, but we're really developing people and opportunity. The Sears, you ride by this building all the time, mm -hmm. right? And one day the light bulb just goes off of 
this is it. This is the next one. So if you look around um, Milwaukee, the projects that we've developed in the past are all about trying to bring some level of hope and vision and dreams back to our community. Because once people can see it and touch it and believe it, I mean, see the touch it, they start to believe it. Um, so Sears is going to be, um, Sears will have a, um, a boutique hotel, some market rate housing, some office space, but it's really to um, give that area of 53206, 53208, that whole thing that we've constantly hear negative about, give them something positive to believe in. Yes, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of people and I say thank you for mm -hmm. having a vision thank you, for thank this you. community. Uh, real quick, we're running out of time, so quickly if you would, I'm interested in knowing what were the things when you knocked on all those doors, because I followed you on social <laughs> media, what were some of the main things that people uh, said to you that they were most concerned with that they'd like for you to keep in mind? I think three things were safety, uh, regardless of who it was, safety was a big issue, um, and education, and also employment. Those are all big things. Mm -hmm. But from engaging everybody and talking to people who don't usually vote, people that don't go out, again, that hope factor was a big thing. People had lost hope. They felt that their votes didn't matter. Um, the electors didn't come around. The candidates didn't come around and talk with them. And that there was no point in getting out and going out to vote. So by talking with them and listening to them and hearing, hearing what they had to hear, what they had to say, giving them hope that something's actually going to change, and now that they have that hope again, we can't let them down. We have to live up to that standard and make sure that we actually <laughs> follow up on our promises. So that's what I intend on doing. Yes, and this is just the beginning for you. I expect big things yeah. big from things. you, young man. <laughs> and like, yeah, the sky's the limit, and I, I'm excited to see where you go from here. Like Oprah says, um, your future's so bright, it burns my eyes. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for thank coming you. by. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Kaylin Haywood Sr. is the co-founder of the real estate development company, the Haywood Group. And Kaylin II, he is the state representative elect for District 16. And that's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, I thank you for watching. And I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.